We're going to take that apart today. Um, this morning, we, we glued that last night. Anyways, uh, before we do that, I want to show you this. Um, this piano was refinished in black. It was a mahogany piano. And the parts that they stripped and redid was the music desk, cheek blocks, key slip, and all the upper parts, probably the top too. Um, what I'm getting at is they, when they sanded this down, oh, somebody did a lot of damage with the sanding, sanding machine. They sanded all the corners around. Here, here, all of these parts, all of them are sanded round. And some are worse than others. These aren't too bad. But this key slip is, is horrible. Um, they sanded all the corners off. Everything's round. This is broken. See that moving. Um, they painted the bottom here. Why didn't they tape that off is a mystery. There's not supposed to be any paint here. When you get paint on these pins, they don't fit right in the wood. And uh, I've got a dent right there. I don't know if that's a dent from something hitting it or if that's a sanding machine gone wacky. Anyways. I'm going to show you this part here. And I'm going to take this apart now. Okay, ready? Let's see what it looks like. Oh, there we go. Yeah, nothing stuck. That's good. See our call we can. If we had to do the other side, we could do the other side with this one. Now, um, break that off like that. There we go. Oh, perfect. Now, let's do a block of wood. You won't see too many of these in any piano shop. I guess they just don't believe in it. But I do. How are you going to get this flat? There. This is not. This is actually rounded a little bit. It's not flat. And see how it butts up against here. Now our other piece of veneer is going to lay over that and overlap this, so you won't see the joint. They damaged this also. This is all sanded round. Everything all along here. They, uh, that's, that's, that, that's difficult. That's pain in the neck to deal with. So we're going to try to smoothen this out. They tell you, if, if you touch something with your hand without a power tool, you're losing money. Well, look what happened. You know how to use the power tool, fine. I suppose they get a power tool. I've got a chainsaw to do this, huh? Let's just cut this off. Like so. I don't have a power tool. The next person won't have to put up with the damage, though. A little bit of rough with paper. Waste time with the other kind here. Get some real heavy duty stuff. You want a real true surface. This is the only way to get it. I, well, maybe. If you know how to use a good power tool, I suppose you can really get that flat. I've seen some really good stuff. Okay, next we're going to make our little, make, well, we don't need a calding for this. Actually, we could use some flexible material. We actually use Lucite to do this. If you put a piece of Lucite here, put a clamp, and bend it over, clamp it at the top, it has enough force on each end to make everything uniform in the, in the gluing in the glue joint so we'll set that up and we'll be back 
Okay, I think we're ready. My glue wasn't ready last time, so I had to stop. That's how we heat it up. We put a little paper over there. This is hot. Hopefully this is hot. This is hot. Everything is hot. With our old heater here. And it's all been... We had a cold run. Uh, a dry run, I mean. We clamped everything up before and took it all apart. But you can't... Wasting all time getting this together. Little gel gel. So, as I explained before, get a little bit of loose side here. This stuff is ideal because one, you can see through it. You can see what you're doing. And two, uh, it doesn't. The glue doesn't stick to it. You can just throw it in the water after, and we can use it over and over and over again. So here we go. This is going to be kind of tricky. I'm going to put that on there. And it has to conform to the curve. That's why I have this two little rocker buttons here. That's actually oak floor beading that we cut off and used for that. So, so the pressure is at the top and the bottom because it is a round surface. And here's our glue already. Nice and hot. In fact, uh, this is yesterday's glue. It was in the microwave and it just turns into this. You keep it in the refrigerator and pull it out and uh, it's hot like this in just minutes. One minute and a half, actually. So I don't get too much on me, even though it doesn't matter. I'm going to do this. Just that same wood I use for down here. I'm not sure what it is. I mentioned that before. It might be, it might be willow. They used a lot of that. We're going to get that top and bottom there. It gets to be a little tricky. Because the glue makes things slide. And it might not work the first time. So it, hopefully that'll stay down there. And this will come over like this. It'll go just like that. Like I said, this has all been prepared. Now when I tighten this down, it's going to probably want to slide up. We'll see. I have a standby clamp here just in case it does and it probably will I can feel it going up so we're gonna just take this put a little helper here there that'll stop that tighten it up a little bit let's take a look on the side here it's gotta go up a little bit so I'm gonna have to loosen this one here just move that up just up a little bit more Kind of handy this thing down here oh, like that perfect tighten this one snug up this one make sure it doesn't slide up anymore because I think I got it right where I want it yeah not bad a little bit more nice about that hot hide glue. You can move it around a little bit. It gives you time. Because everything's hot. Also, another reason to heat up your glue is it won't gas off when you touch it with the hot glue. If you touch cold wood with hot glue, it'll begin to gas off and it'll drive the glue out of the pores and compromise your glue joint. There. Now see how that conformed, that nice, that lucite? It's really good stuff to do this with. I'm going to wait till that dries. It probably can take it off three, four hours. And of course we've got to wipe up the mess now. So, there you have it.